Okay, this is problem 15.5. It's on page 664. The rotor of an electric motor has a speed of 1800 RPM when the power is cut off. Now, 1800, what is that? Well, that's revolutions per minute. The, those may not be the most convenient units. We may have to change them. The rotor is then observed to come to rest after executing 625 revolutions. Now, I've got an N for speed. We could use omega if it was in revolution or radians per second. What do we normally use? What symbol do we use for an angular position change? For linear position change, we use x or y or z. For an angular position change, what do we normally use? Use a theta. So this is the change in angle, right? This is the delta theta. Assuming uniform acceleration, in other words, uh, constant acceleration, determine the number of revolutions that the motor executes A in reaching. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong problem. Uh, determine A, the angular acceleration, B, the time required for the rotor to come to rest. So as I said, uh, what we need to do is use the equations on page 661. So notice what we've been given. We've been given a speed, so this is kind of like an omega. In fact, we can calculate that speed. If you guys would give me some calculator help, let's just multiply it out. There are 2 pi radians per revolution, and there's 1 minute per 60 seconds. So the minutes go away and the revolutions go away. We'll have radians per second. How many radians per second is this? Sorry? 3,925. 3,925. Everybody agree with that? Is that right? Yeah. Um, we'll see 2 pi times 1,800 divided by 60 gives me 188 and a half. 188 and a half? Do we have three answers? 188 and a half. And the other answer? Yeah. Basically, okay. So since two people have 188 and a half, let's assume that's, it should be a lower number. <laughs> so I believe that one. Because it's not a whole minute's worth, right? It's uh, just a second's worth. All right, so we have the speed, we have the change in position. Now we're supposed to find alpha, the acceleration. Well, are there any equations on page 60, 661 that involve a change in position, a delta theta and omega, and what we're looking for, the alpha? Sure. Equation 15.9. See that at the bottom of page 661? Now that equation looks like this. It says omega squared equals omega naught squared. I guess this is sort of the solution part, where is this given part? Uh, plus 2 alpha delta theta. Now you may not recognize it that way, but that's what it really is, right? It's a change in position. So what that theta minus theta naught is. So since alpha is what we're looking for, we can just solve for it. By the way, what are we talking about here? Well, we've got a motor. Does it speed up or slow down? Well, let's see. It slows down. The power's cut off. So what's the final speed? Zero. All right. The initial speed's going to go in here. The omega naught's going to go right there. So solving for alpha, how would we do it? be negative omega naught squared divided by, let's see, 2 delta theta. Right. Now, should we end up with a positive result or a negative result? In other words, is the acceleration in the same direction as the speed? Now, this may be a little bit confusing. Let me show you how to think about angular motion. The motor I drew a second ago looks something like this. Okay, so here's the shaft, here's the motor. Now, let's just say that the speed is in the counterclockwise direction. Let me show you how we make this into a vector. A lot of people try to draw angled lines to indicate the vector. There's a really nice way to do it. Take your right hand and point your fingers in the direction of the angled arrow and let your fist close. Keep your thumb out and then your thumb is in the direction that you need. So in other words, what we normally do to indicate this rotation I can't draw it literally coming out of the board, but that's supposed to be coming out of the board. What you normally do is you use a double-headed arrow for 
angular changes in, or angular uh, speeds and angular accelerations. You can also use these double-headed arrows for torques. But then if you ever see a double-headed arrow, to figure out the direction of motion, you just stick your thumb, your right thumb, in that direction of the double-headed arrow, and the way your fingers curl around is the direction of, of the turn. Okay. Have you guys seen the double-headed arrow symbology before? A couple people, yes, a couple of okay. So if, if this is, now, now we really have a positive direction. Positive is out this way for angular measurements. Now, do you think delta theta is a positive thing according to this measurement or negative? Positive, isn't it? Because look, the, if you put a mark on the shaft, that mark's going to move around this way because it's rotating this way. So the change in theta, the final theta position is going to be greater than the initial theta position. So it's not a surprise that this is positive and then omega is positive. How about alpha? If this shaft slows down, is the change in speed this way or is the change in speed this way? The change in speed is this way, right? Because the change in speed, we get less and less and less speed. So it's not really a surprise to see that negative sign. See, this is positive. That would be negative. So the angular acceleration is back this way, whereas the change in position and, of course, the velocity are both positive. So let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. So the initial, really this would be omega naught, because that's the initial speed, is negative 188 and a half or so radians per second. Now the square, is that going to cancel out the negative? No, the negative sign just comes from rearranging the equation. It's the rest of this that is squared. Then we have to divide by 2 times the change in angle. Now we have a slight problem here. If I put in 625 revolutions, it's not going to work very well. That would be a very revolutionary answer. <laughs> Bad pun, but it's a small group, so I've got to do something. All right, so we'll have to change this to radians. So what's the conversion factor? 2 pi. 2 pi. 2 pi what? Radians. Radians per? Okay. Per revolution. Every revolution has 2 pi radians. Okay. So take 625 times 2 pi, what do you get? Two thousand nine hundred twenty-five radians. Okay, that sounds reasonable because it's about six times this. All right, so that makes sense. Okay, so three thousand nine hundred twenty-five radians. You see, the radians are going to go away. Well, you could say you have radians per second squared. It doesn't matter. Okay, so take this ratio: one eighty-eight and a half squared divided by two divided by thirty-nine twenty-five. What do you get? Negative 4.5. About two. About two. Anyone second that? Good. Radians per second squared are the units. Anyone agree with that? I have another answer. I think that's about right. In my head, what I did is I rounded this up to 200, to 200 squared, which would be 40,000. This is about 4,000 times 2, which is 8,000. So 40,000 divided by 8,000 is about 5. And so this number being about 5 makes sense. So I think this number is correct. Okay. So I believe that that should be our angular acceleration that was requested. So let's. Uh, Put our answer in here. Now that we know it, negative 4.52 radians per second squared would be the angular acceleration. Now the other question was, how much time does it take for the motor to, to slow down? <coughs> well, are there any other equations that would help us? Notice all I'm really doing is I'm using constant acceleration equations. I'm just looking for an equation that has all the variables in it that I need or that I want. Okay, so. Now I've got the angular acceleration, I've got the change in position, I've got the speed, but now I need time. Which equation would be the most convenient for getting time out of this thing? 
What do you think? Page 661. You're only four you got a 25% chance. What's that? Omega 8 and omega 9 plus 15. So 15.7. Right? And you're right, that, that's it. Omega equals omega naught plus alpha t. Absolutely. We know that the final speed is zero. Now let's, let's solve for it. The final speed would be zero. And so the amount of time can easily be calculated as negative omega naught over alpha. So, so the initial speed is 188 and a half radians per second. The angular acceleration is negative 4. Point, I forgot my negative sign from here. The angular acceleration is negative 4.52 radians per second squared. And so what happens when well, we get uh, time in seconds? So if somebody grab your calculator. 188 and a half over 4 and 0.52, what do we have? Sorry? 41.7. 41.7. You want to second that? Okay. Makes sense. So there's the amount of time that it takes for the motor to slow down. So all we really did was we used constant acceleration equations. Questions, comments? Please feel free to ask questions. We're glad to answer them.